Okay, so I um, decided to study the rate of decomposition in Grand Forks using pig remains. So, uh, my name is Christine Van Brocklin, and I'm a forensic science and anthropology major. So why study decomposition in Grand Forks? Grand Forks has been labeled as the coldest city in the, or the coldest state in, and city in the contiguous 48 with the lowest average monthly temperature in the winter months. And currently there is no typical decomposition pattern that can be followed in colder climates. And the reason like understanding decomposition is so important is because if you can determine when someone died based off of the decomposition, you can um, relate that back to the suspect in their alibi, figure out where they were at the time to see if maybe they potentially killed the decedent. So there's a general decomposition pattern that can be followed in most climates. And within the first 24 hours, there will be a likely greenish discoloration within the first of, of the lower right abdomen. Within the first 24 to 36 hours, the greenish discoloration will be of the entire abdomen. Within the first 36 to 48 hours, you'll see marbling or purplish lines of the body and bloating of the face. Within 48 to 60 hours, you'll see desiccation or drying of the fingertips. Within 60 to 72, bloating of the entire body. Within four to seven days, the skin will blub or blister. You'll have fluid seepage, uh, hair sloughing or falling off, uh, skin slippage, and the putrid odor. Within days to weeks, you'll see uh, dehydration of the body tissues. And within weeks to months, the adipocere formation, and that's uh, the transformation of the fat into a waxy substance. And then lastly, mummification and skeletonization. So for this study, um, the first step, I, the thing I needed to do was create a scavenger box. And I, I went to Menards and I got two by threes and one half inch mesh fencing that was placed over the openings. And the reason I decided to use this is because, well, first of all, if I have scavengers coming in and scattering the pig remains across campus, it, would, it wouldn't really be a good thing. And, uh, <laughs> students would be freaked out. So, also, I specifically wanted to eliminate the factor of scavengers just to study exactly how the climate will affect the rate of decomposition. So, that was really important. And most of the studies I had read up on had used scavenger boxes to eliminate scavengers. So, and then to begin on uh, January 7th, 2019, a pig weighing approximately 45 pounds died at 8:30 a.m. and at 4:05 p.m. the pig was placed in the scavenger box um, right right around here by the coolie. This is the wellness center and the pig's like right in there. So data collection. Every day I went out and I grabbed temperatures with my infrared thermometer. Um, I got one reading of the pig itself and then when the snow covered it I would just read the surface temperature of the snow and then the ground near the pig. Um, I used a, das a Lascar data logger, and I uh, put one next to the pig, and then I put one hanging from a tree to record air temperature, and that recorded temperature every 30 minutes along with dew point. And then every day I also um, got photos to monitor the visual changes. Once the snow began to thaw, there was a lot of animal activity, so uh, I put a trail cam out on the site to record the scavengers that did come just to kind of log what was there and what animals uh, would be of interest here. And then also on top of that, uh, daily weather data was recorded from Grand Forks International Airport and then compared to the weather on site. And then here is a video clip of the visual changes. And this is over 90 days. And there's when the snow begins to hit, <laughs> as you can see. And it stays co uh, covered for quite a long time, actually. And as the pig is covered, no significant changes happened at all, as you'll be able to see when the snow begins to melt.
lots of snow, as you guys remember. And right about here is where the warming starts to happen. And there's the thaw beginning. And then um, this last video clip that is going to play right after this is a comparison of the first and the last image so you can see some of the more significant details it kind of got lost. Um, most, mostly what you can see between these two is a significant loading of the abdomen and the face. So um, results. Uh, marbling occurred on day 77 or March 25th, and that was 12 days into the snow thaw. That normally appears uh, 36 to 48 hours after death. Folding of the face occurred on day 78. That was 13 days into the snow thaw. Uh, that normally appears also 36 to 48 hours after death. Folding of the body appeared day 83. Um, that was 18 days into the snow thaw. That normally happens uh, 72 hours after death. And then um, I still have yet to observe blistering of the skin and fluid, fluid seepage. Um, one thing that I did find very interesting during this study was the difference between um, the temperature readings collected on site and uh, the daily average temperature collected from the local weather station. Now the data logger that did collect this information was put in under the snow which insulates it slightly. So the temperatures were going to be a little bit higher but overall the general same pattern is followed. And here's a table that kind of summarizes it. So the average temperature on site was recorded to be 14.1 degrees Fahrenheit. And at the weather station, their average air temperature was 6.9 degrees. The mi minimum temperature on site was negative 25. And the weather station had it at negative 18. And the maximum uh, was 67 on site. And at the weather station, it was 39. Um, this would be the, the temperature insulated under the snow, so that's why um, the average is a little bit higher. But one result that was interesting with this is what you gain from the weather station, I found, is not going to be exactly the conditions on the site of the decedent, wherever the homicide took place, or wherever the body is located. Um, as far as insect and animal activity goes, normally uh, blowflies and green and blue bottleflies generally arrive and lay eggs on a body within minutes after death but I've observed no insect activity actually, well, fly activity actually up till yesterday when I did see one fly and then when I walked up it, it flew away. The first thing that was to arrive after the snow thaw was um, bite marks on the cage, which I knew was indicative of animal activity along with several different prints in the snow. Um, as each day of the thaw occurred, the, there was more and more significant markings of biting along the edges of the scavenger box which I thought was interesting, and I really wanted to determine which animals were out there, so I started to, well, early in the winter I recorded different footprints, so that's when we set up the trail cam to kind of figure out which animals were most interested in the box, and overall the, the prints that I found, I found coyote prints, fox prints, bunny prints, some deer prints, I saw an owl, crows, so there's tons of sca scavengers out there. And then um, the fox was one of the most uh, frequent visitors of the box, surprisingly. Um, I've caught him several times on the trail cam, and I have a little clip of him out there, actually. <laughs> so he's uh, come and visit several times, and he's actually shown a lot of curiosity in the pig. <laughs> so I haven't reported anything biting on the box. Uh, most of the bites are on the back. So... <clears throat> And he comes back around right there. <laughs> and this is just an overview of the findings of my report. Um, basically with my report, my main goal is to be able to look at the significant markers of a decompositional pattern, such as bloating of the face, body, 
the purple marbling and determine which day it will appear after the thaw. So um, with this report, I hope to re repeat it next year and then see if the same day after thaw those markers occurred. And I, I hope to continue this out and determine which bugs came out and then go all the way as far as I can with this in the summer months. I want to say a special thank you to McNair, uh, Dr. Sharp, for helping me get the equipment for this, and then also facilities and campus police for approving this study. Thank you. Oh, yeah, do you guys have any questions? The, the bloating, is my understanding, does that occur from the gases that are? Leaving? Exactly, and the warming up. Um, another thing that I did kind of get from that, and I haven't been able to complete this part of my research, is as it's been warming up, the pig's temperature is significantly warmer than the ground temperature, and that's partly what contributes to the bloating, is the gases inside, and they, as they get warm, they expand and cause that bloating. So how long will you be able to leave that, that same pig out there? I would like to leave it as long as I possibly can. Um, the main concern would be the residents complaining of a smell or just people getting curious and going out there. So I would like to get all the way to the point at least where I can connect, collect a significant amount of insects and determine what they are, and then get the last markers. I probably wouldn't go all the way to um, adipose formation and skeletonization, but I'd like to see how far I can take it, maybe into July if it doesn't get too bad, but I'm assuming the longer I let it go on, the more complaints will come in. So yeah. Yeah. When you mentioned collecting insects, um, I know determination of logistical location can you know, be determined by the um, how much crossover do you find like in the Midwest? Um, do you know? I actually don't know that right now, and um, Dr. Sharp is going to be helping me with that when I collect the insects. I got I recently got a net to help collect them, and then we're going to be bringing them back to the lab. She's going to help me sort and determine what exactly we're seeing and compare that to the insect right here and what's here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be, that's a really good idea. You know, like I think um, Becky um, Simons does a lot of stuff with insects. And yeah, she does. People too, so. I'll have to talk to her. She's really nice. Any other questions? Where did your idea for this study originally come from? Well, um, I had so much fun with field school. And then when Dr. Stubblefield left, I was pretty um, sad. So, okay, so field school is when they take uh, pig remains and they bury them on campus, pretty deep actually, probably a couple, four feet deep, and then we uh, use specific clues that are given to us to figure out, and, and on the ground, like the ground scar, to figure out where they are, and then we learn the proper techniques for excavation, and we bring it back to the lab, and then we get the, the pig down to um, skeletal material, and then analyze the trauma, and learn the whole process from excavating it out of the ground to the, all the procedure in the lab. So. I wanted to kind of do what I could here with what I knew, and then I researched similar studies that had been done, like, and one I really looked into that was kind of similar to mine was how clothing affects the rate of decomposition, and there's a ton of different studies like that, and so I just want, since our climate is so unique here, I thought that'd be a great um, angle to look at it, because there is no typical pattern that can be followed for extreme climates, extreme cold and extreme heat. There's just a general one for most climates that's followed, so, I kind of want to get an idea that could be, maybe this information could later be used for homicide cases. I actually thought, like, should I have done that or not? But a lot of the studies I had read about clothing found there to be minimal to no effect of clothing at all whatsoever. So, because I thought, I, like, I had made a significant error, but when I really looked into depth out of all the studies I had read, clothing almost made no difference. Which is, I thought that, I, I assumed it would have, but. Well, yeah, but a lot of that stuff's in journals, so that's Yeah, true. that too. Yeah? And then I visited with you a number of weeks ago. You talked about the, the bearing on the Drushadine. Yeah. Yeah, well, with the Drushadine case, uh, when they found her, they had they kind of had trouble, like, by looking at her and determining her time of death. Like, they knew when she went missing, but at first, upon initial examination of the body, she appeared to be dead not as long as she did, and they were kind of confused, and it threw people off. So hopefully with a study like this, um, 
when someone is found in a colder climate, they can use this information, you know, to, to find the victim's family quicker. Or if there isn't a big of media, you know, it will help locate the victim's family or, you know, identify the victim and potentially the suspect too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.